So just a little bit about myself. My name is Ting. Um, I'm from China and I've been living in Singapore for 21 years. So within this 21 years, 16 years I've been working with uh, top hotel chains like IG, Marriott Hotels Group on China marketing. And before that, I spent six years being a Java developer and business analyst with major banks like in China and with UOB. So when I uh, draft marketing strategy, I always include the tech part in it. So you probably will see that in the WeChat as well, um, which we're going to discuss today. So the topics um, we're going to cover, apart from what, what is WeChat and all the features, is that I'm going to talk about the different strategy for hotel groups and hotels. They are different. And also about WeChat tech. Um, how to do the content, data, and advertising on WeChat. And then the last, share my experience on the time and cost, which everyone wants to know. All right, um, opportunities. So I believe in this conference that there's a lot talking about revenues. So um, everyone is trying to optimize their rates and how they sell the room. Um, there is one big opportunity here. It's a fresh blood of customers from China. So everyone knows there's a huge amount of Chinese outbound travelers these years, and the increase is averagely 14% every year. And if you look at the number 149 million, it seems to be a big number, but it's not. It's only the beginning. There's only about 10% of Chinese actually has passport. And that means there is another 149 million or even more in the next two to five years that's going to come traveling overseas, if it's not more than that. So these are the fresh customers and those people, the first destination is always nope. APAC. So think about them. Sorry. This is where you can dramatically increase your revenue. So the good news for hotels, especially for smaller hotels, um, is that the Chinese travelers, their habits change really fast, which is a great thing because now we're not talking about those group travelers that are causing problems everywhere. Um, we're talking about the travelers who actually started to uh, appreciate services, quality, experience, and leisure. So according to c Nowadays, about 83% of the travelers actually buy four or five star products, including hotels. That's a huge amount for all the Chinese. And also, uh, the ones that people spend most money on is not those top destinations. It's experiences, unique places, and even off-track destinations. So when you think about your strategy, being unique, it's important. Provide services and experience actually is important for Chinese travelers these days. So to capture this opportunity, what's the best channel? WeChat. Um, I've been doing the digital marketing for 16 years and I only started to recommend WeChat since last year, I have to say. It used to have so many channels to do advertising marketing in China. Um, WeChat was one of them, and it was like a murky water. There, there are so many people doing really fishy things. So it's very hard to control channel. Um, but something has changed in the last one or two years. WeChat has come out among all, beat all the competitors to become this one platform that nobody can ignore. It's not because it's social, it's because of its technology because they have transformed into an um, ecosystem that people are talking about Internet of Things nowadays. WeChat platform is the one that's actually realizing it because when they talk about super app, you can do everything on WeChat. So I just had a trip to Chengdu for two weeks. Every day I do almost everything on WeChat. So let me just show you. If you have your WeChat, um, and open it. And 
you click on the bottom me this session you have the screen over here and then you go to wallet i don't know if all of you have that so under here you can see that all of these apps that relate to daily use including paying your utilities your mobile phone top up get a cab, you can buy a train ticket, you can book hotels, buy movie tickets, you can rent a house over there. So almost most of the things you need, you can use WeChat. And most importantly, on the top left, that is where you can actually pay with your WeChat wallet. At any store, on the beach, you can just bring your phone, you don't need to bring your wallet while you're wearing a bikini. And then if there's a vendor selling a mango, and you can just buy it there with your phone. So everywhere, you don't have to bring your wallet. You can do everything on WeChat. And in China, talking about mobile first country, that is China nowadays. There is about 800 million smartphone users in China. And the WeChat monthly active user is already beyond 1 billion. So that means about more than 85% of Chinese are using WeChat almost every day, including those grandmas in the villages. They will not have a laptop, but they will have a mobile phone and they're using WeChat. Um, another, another thing is about the credit card. So Chinese has been behind of this whole credit card thing for years. And then finally they have credit cards. But after a couple of years later, credit cards have been replaced by WeChat. So uh, nowadays, WeChat Pay is a lot more popular than credit card in China as well. So um, this is why I'm going to talk about later why it's important to have a WeChat uh, payment options at a hotel. All right, so what is WeChat? Like I just mentioned, although WeChat started as a social app, now it's a lot more than that. It is an ecosystem that's a computing system that actually can connect to all the other systems as well. So if you think about years ago, when internet became a new thing, a very exciting thing, this is the moment as well. You can think of WeChat as the other internet. So, Everything is built on top of it using their open framework and everything is integrated. So for example, you will have your WeChat account, which they call that OA on the phone, official account. That is basically your website. And then you can connect to the normal website, um, for example, as a hotel booking. If you have a booking mini program on the mobile phone, you can actually connect to your central inventory system globally, which is connected to your website as well. So you don't have to worry about synchronization or integration. There are already people doing that, very sophisticated interface connecting to everybody, uh, including WeChat and Ctrip and everything. Um, almost all the central reservation systems are able to connect to WeChat nowadays. The same as CRM integrators. Uh, if you're using Salesforce, uh, HubSpot, they can be connected to WeChat as well. So you can capture all these data through WeChat, the user information, and integrate with your sales CRM system as well. As for hotel, you can create any kind of mini program to provide services, bookings, and then connect to the WeChat Pay to serve Chinese customers. And actually all of them, I have to say, it's much, much easier than 16 years ago when I was a programmer. It would take a lot of time to program this. Nowadays, it's much, much easier. All right. Um, when you talk about WeChat, that there's a lot of terms flying around. And if you, if you search internet, it's actually very difficult to figure out what they really are even on the official website. So I just thought I would go through some of these. Um, probably you all know what is official account. 
Um, that's basically where the website is on the mobile phone. So there, there's confusion about the three different types of accounts. But it's quite simple, really. The subscri subscription account is basically designed for magazines or news. So people receive like one post every day just to read. So for hotels, hospitality, it's actually not suitable. Um, service account is the one that you can have more interactive functionalities um, and a lot more open connect connectivities. This is the account you want to register, service account. The name makes sense as well. Corporate account. The corporate account is designed as the old-fashioned internet. Basically, it's the companies that are connecting to their staff. It's like an internal account. And the top 500 um, corporations in China, 80% of them already have a corporate account on WeChat. So moments. How many have you heard of moments? Oops. OK, only a few. So this is where the marketer want to put their advertisement on. That's the Facebook timeline, basically. Uh, people share um, their photos, comments, everything. Um, mini program, I think some people probably heard about mini program, one of the new hottest thing. It's basically an app within the WeChat system. The difference between mini program and the app is mini program is cloud-based. So that means the user does not need to download the app. And sometimes, actually most of the time, the user doesn't even know they're using a mini program. It could be just like a menu on the official account menu, you click there, you're already in the mini program booking. But to them, that's seamless. They don't even realize they're opening a mini program. Everything is in the cloud. You finished, and that's it. It doesn't cost any of the space on your phone. And there is no interruption with the user experience. Was, that, that's one of the smartest things that WeChat has done, I have to say. Um, all right, there is an extremely confusing term called brand zoom nowadays. Um, it's not a product or services or anything, it's a concept. Basically, um, in order to provide search on WeChat, because WeChat is a closed platform uh, comparing to Weibo, which is more like uh, media. So for WeChat, if they want to see the content, they have to follow a particular account. So for the brand, how do they reach to public? The WeChat now have the search function. It's still at a young stage, but I believe in the future they might be competing with Baidu. So they have this search function, which people can search a brand. And how do you know, among all these articles talk about Club Map, like just now when we do the search, you have two articles above the official account. So how do you know which one is a real deal? For example, if someone is searching for to buy Cartier watch, you don't want to buy a fake one. But on WeChat, how do you know which one is from the real brand? So this is WeChat solution. Same thing for the hotel. So if you have a brand zone verified by the um, WeChat, and people know this is a real deal. So you can think that as a landing page. So when you set up at the back end, you just say, I want to set up brand zone, and I created a landing page. It's a simple landing page where you link your official account, you link your mini program, or anything on this landing page. It's like an entry point. So when people search, they will find this. And then from there, they can access everything is official. So this is uh, an important concept. There are brands already started doing this, especially retail brands like Cartier. Nike. Um, hotel brands nowadays, they're starting to thinking of setting up. Not many have done that yet. So another concept WeChat Pay, I think everyone knows about this already. Official brand store. So this is something interesting that hotels should know about. When you set up a brand zone, there are two things you can set up. One is the landing page, the other one is the brand store. So this is a mini program that has e-commerce capability and it is free. So if 
in any of the hotels want to sell some of their stuff in the hotel, like the roll, like some souvenirs. You can set up a store and people can actually purchase from the store using the WeChat Pay. So what is the WeChat for that? One is for long term, it's good to use that to build a fan base, a member base, even run a loyalty program on it. Um, it's very good at educating the market and creating brand awareness. Another one is if you run this account properly for years, it will actually become your own media channel, it will become your own communication and sales channel. And what's more, that nobody's doing EDM anymore. So this is your combination of website, EDM, and your uh, e-commerce booking engines, everything in one. Of course, at the short term, you can use WeChat as an advertising channel. It's very powerful because of its reach. You can do direct sales, for example, in hotel purchase. Um, you can run any kind of campaign, especially if you partner with the other um, like credit cards or tour agencies and OTAs to run campaigns. It can be very powerful as well. So why do I say this is the best time? Um, it's because of some new features that come out. Um, number one is last year, or the last two years, WeChat has been cleaning it up. So like I was saying before, that WeChat is a murky water. It's very hard to navigate. But now WeChat has put a lot of effort to cracking down all these um, um, illegal operations, fake data, all of that. So it's much better nowadays. It's almost impossible to create a big account overnight anymore. So for some Chinese marketers, they think this is a bad thing. But to me, that's a great thing because you're not supposed to be able to create a big account with millions of followers over like one month. Um, so for our clients, it's a good time because now if they have followers, it's more likely to be quality followers. And if they have any data, it's usually uh, more reliable data. So apart from that, the WeChat has been moving towards business. It used to be more personal lifestyle. Now it has a lot of features when they're launching. It's all for business and especially for hospitality. If you look at one, number one, the most important thing, takeaway today is now the WeChat account. If you're a foreign company, you can register a WeChat account and the mainland Chinese can see it. So I don't know if you guys know, in the past, if you're a foreign company, if you're a foreign hotel, you can register a WeChat account. But only people outside of China can actually access to it. Mainland Chinese cannot access to it. So it's completely useless. So there are actually those agents that act like a middleman to help you to do that very expensive and also at the end they own your account. It's under their name, so that doesn't really work. Um, so in the past, it's usually my clients, usually they all have their own China office, their China bank account and everything. So it's easier for the big guys. But for smaller hotel groups or in individual hotels, this is the great news. So. You can just create one very easily in two weeks time and you can access to the mainland Chinese market. So um, Brand Zone mini program, it's all targeted at business and uh, the integrators, like I said, because now it's, uh, the, the technology is getting more and more mature. So there are many of the, not just Chinese programmers like US, tech teams, they're all creating all kinds of softwares on WeChat, uh, all kinds of integrate, integrations to WeChat system. So I think the tech world has already noticed the huge influence of WeChat and they're all acting on it. So that's a great news for everyone. You have a lot of product to select from. Another one that um, can show that WeChat's dedication to support the hospitality industry especially outbound traveling, is that they even created a special project called WeChat Go. So WeChat Go is not a new product, it's not a new service. It is an initiative by WeChat to support Chinese outbound travelers. So they have a task force 
which working with tourism boards like Singapore Tourism Board um, and other tourism boards in Europe and in Southeast Asia to create uh, travel guides and travel programs and also they work with local telcos to launch something called WeChat SIM card. So what that what does that do is um, they give if people have this WeChat SIM card, a lot of times in countries they can have unlimited data roaming within the WeChat system. So that's actually the cheapest way to do WeChat to do data roaming. So if I travel somewhere, I'm Chinese, so I'd rather get this than a local SIM card or anything. And then think if your hotel and if your guests they uh, they want to when they're overseas they want to book something communicate with the uh, if they want to like uh, make reservations they want to talk to the hotel directly to book any uh, transportation anything they will more likely to use it if you have a program within the WeChat system so they don't have to spend money on extra data for local phone calls. So this make a big difference. Um, and they're still trying to do more and more with the WeChat Go initiative. So that is a good news for a lot of the hotels. All right, so now let's talk about what can a hotel group do, and hotels do for the, um, to, to take advantage of the WeChat system. How many of you are actually from hotel groups today? Oh, great. <laughs> All right, so curious about hotel group. So for hotel groups, um, there are four aspects that you can consider when it comes to your strategy. One is obviously direct booking. Everyone wants to do direct booking. And this is possible from on WeChat through the mini program, or even if you just offer that uh, promotions. Um, boost loyalty. So like I mentioned, this is where you want to build your long-time strategy, attract your members to follow you on this account, and use this to replace your EDM or other communication strategy, because this is more effective in China now. EDM, people are putting them in attraction nowadays. Um, also, that you will be able to, like, uh, for example, IG hotels, they will have their loyalty program integrated, so the user can check their points and everything on their phone. Um, support hotels. So I believe that when you launch a new hotel, you want to uh, promote your featured hotels or boost low season bookings. This is a good channel for communication and promotion. Um, drive brand awareness as well. Okay, there are four steps in your strategy. The first is create an account. And then after you create an account, the most important foundation is to create good content. So to attract your followers to actually follow you and come back to your account on a regular basis is through content. Content marketing is a key to WeChat uh, strategy success. And the next step, when you want to run ad hoc campaign, this is where you boost your members and um, create like a high flow of um, sales as well. That's where you put your money down for campaigns and paid media. And then the last is if you have the budget, obviously you want to integrate WeChat Pay and also create your own mini program for direct booking. Uh, of course, at the start, you can link it to, to your responsive website, but from our experience, that the drop-off of responsive website is higher than a mini program. And if your responsive website uh, is not completely end-to-end -end Chinese, Wherever there is English, there will be job off. So, um, if you have any budget, convert that into a mini program booking system. It's actually not that expensive to build. Right. This is just an overview of the structure, just like a sitemap as a website as well. 
So you can take a look, some suggestions here. So how do you connect to the other system? I kind of covered it before. Um, one is use the interface to connect to your central reservation system, which also can benefit you to connect to Ctrip as well. So you can do both. Um, use a VChat Pay to connect to the bank. So it's all quite mature technology. Um, you can run the Loti program on the VChat as well if you wish. And uh, you can have a brand account and hotel account both on VChat and link to each other. So the brand accounts can actually promote the hotel accounts and vice versa. This is just an example of the brand zone setup. Alright, I want to talk about a best practice for hotel group. So I have I have these friends who like to travel on their own and they have young children and they always uh, book the hotel themselves. They like to go to five star hotels, unique places. Um, they are well traveled, they speak English, and they are those nice guests you want. So they are members of almost all these hotel groups. You know, they are members of IG, they are members of Marriott. But um, when I ask which account they are following, they are not following any of them except for Clubmat. So I was asking her that why do you only follow Clubmat? So she said, number one, Clubmat was one of the earliest in China, especially for all inclusive. So being there early is important. Okay, because China is just too crowded. Um, number two, she was saying, the Club Med always have good promotions on their own website and on their own WeChat. So they have, um, nowadays everyone has promotions. So if one of my clients say, oh, we're gonna have this promotion 25% off, it's like, <laughs> that's, nowadays 25% off, it's like, it's not good. It's not good enough. And if you go to Club Mad, sometimes their message is up to 50% off. Right? So I don't know how you can do that, but only if you have really good offers nowadays, you can get attention, unfortunately. This is one thing. Secondly is that um, they are family with young kids. And Club Mad being the first in China, they had a lot of publicity on their positioning. So they have done their positioning really well, being the Chinese, uh, the, the child-friendly, all-inclusive resorts. So that is very important to know what sells and try to bring that out in everything you do when you are doing the WeChat. For example, I'm a mom with young children, and I used to travel backpacking style. The moment I had a baby, I go straight to five-star resorts. So when I look at this picture, this is um, one of those posts. I grab this because when I look at these two club mat staff pushing the stroller, not me, that's where I want to be, right? So it's important you have the content, knowing your customer, knowing your audience, and put content they're interested in. And another one. Another one, if you talk about any of the WeChat specialists in China, they will tell you one thing, one trip to do is to give away something on a regular basis. So that means, uh, I, I have friends who earn lots of money, and you, you'll be surprised. They, they would go back to an account just to click every day to earn some points, which seriously means nothing to them. But they like to do that because they're bored on their transit, you know, like two hours a day, you know, going back, that's a minimum in Beijing. Um, so why not? Just go there, click, and then they get points, or get some lucky draw or something. And then if there is an important promotional message, they will be able to see it. So this is a lot of the people are doing, and um, Matt is giving away this cute little bear, 20 every week. So. Um, if you go to their official account, 
that you can click on I want a bear. <laughs> so you just need to click there and you're in the lucky draw every week and you may receive this little cute bear. So people just go back for that. <laughs> so almost every time I would say, you know, think about something that is like your signature move and keep to it. Um, there are other, if I can think of like a um, school Tuesday, you know, make something that stick to the mind. You know, club back, club mat bear because it's a child friendly resort, right? So um, Tuesday flash sale, scoot. I don't book it, but I still remember it. I don't like the airline, but I still know on Tuesday. Is it? Is that the scoot? Yeah. I still remember it. So find something signature to work with. So actually talk about that. I just give you a, the other example of uh, what Clubman did right. Um, there are so many campaigns on WeChat nowadays, enormous amount. Um, so what to catch attention? There, there are a couple of, you know, kind of campaigns, but gamified campaigns always catch more attention. So Club Mac has this very su successful campaign. It's very simple though, like a uh, Tinder style. Swipe left, right? Look at the picture, <laughs> do you like it? Do you not like it? Right, so this is a very successful campaign because it's almost like, it's a, like a game type. At the same time, uh, they obviously also got a lot of user data on their preference. Um, so when you, when you launch a campaign, think about something interesting, unique. All right, so um, we'll go down to strategy for hotel. So just now it's hotel group. So there are a lot of hotels, in, especially in Bali and Thailand, that's already busy setting up their WeChat accounts and spending a lot of money doing, trying to get members and all of that. Um, and a lot of them <coughs> spent quite some money with very little result. So there is one thing I want to say is um, Chinese outbound travelers rarely go to the same hotel twice. Leisure ones, leisure travelers. So unless your hotel that's business oriented, you have business traveler go back quite often, that try not to waste your time on getting thousands of followers because that shouldn't be your goal. And it's very expensive actually to acquire followers. So for hotel group, it makes sense to do that because then they're benefiting all the hotels within the group. But for individual hotels, what you should focus on is are the first three. One is make more sale on site. When the travelers, when the Chinese guests are in the hotel, um, see what they might purchase in the hotel, like room service, spa treatment, local tours, any products, mooncakes, and that kind of stuff in hotel purchase. So this is what you want to focus on. Uh, secondly is provide services. So Chinese, uh, Chinese travelers, they obviously have a language issue. And uh, so they may need more support, but they're shy to ask. And they're shy to go to the concert to, have, to use their English. So try to think of automation, how you can do that through the WeChat, because sending messages is easier. If you have one Chinese staff, that he can actually help with a lot more Chinese by through the WeChat channel as well. Um, or if you have a lot of Chinese, you don't want to hire a lot of Chinese staff. Think about automation. Um, there are tools that you can you know, implement to help. For example, if the Chinese can order room service on their phone instead of picking up a phone call, you know, it's more likely they're going to do that. Um, so this is the part you want to focus on, services, make their life easier. And because of that, they might actually tell their friends about it. You know, this is actually, if you go to this hotel, it's easy, you don't have to go through the group. So this is how you get your words out. Free advertisement on moments. Um, word of mouth, this is where you want to concentrate. Although the Chinese do not go back to the same hotel, but if they like it, they like to talk about it. They like to share pictures. 
So you have your service, make them happy, and then you want to encourage them, give them a little push, so they actually will take the action of sharing it. Um, when I was in uh, the China, um, Shangri-La Haikou, what they did is at the last day of my stay, they the floor manager came to our room and saying that they are good. They actually gave us an actual large fruit plate. It's all the nice fruit. And then the floor manager came and checked, you know, if our stay is okay. And and they particularly mentioned that we gave you a big, you know, fruit. So hope you have a good stay. Blah blah blah. And then um, please give us a review and <laughs> wow. five stars. And, and then of course I said yes. And once they said yes, I feel obliged to do that. I mean, <laughs> this is the thing. I um, I stayed in a hotel I really love, and I wanted to give them review. Right? You just forget sometimes, or you're too busy. You just push it forever. I still have one resort. I feel guilty that I didn't post any review on TripAdvisor because it was so nice to me. But I did this for Shangri-La Hotel just a couple of days after my trip. I squeezed out time to do it because I gave my word. So it kind of just do something, make them feel like you know they need to do this. And uh, and once it's on the moment, you know people heard about it. If you have friends who go there, has no trouble being a Chinese and have a good time. Their friends are going to go there. So this is your free advertisement. Loyalty, that's basically the same thing that you want to do as hotel group. Um, this is a long-term goal and take a lot of effort. Um, but there's one thing about business traveler is that discount doesn't matter that much to them. Uh, as my business traveling friends, what they want is points or personal benefits because the company pays. So your strategy should be different if you're talking a Chinese business traveler. All right, so if you want to use the WeChat for marketing, what can a hotel do? Something very simple. First, set up your account. Uh, install WeChat Pay if you can. It's actually quite simple. There are a lot of local agencies for each country that you can set up WeChat Pay. And it's not just WeChat Pay. They also do Alipay and Union Pay, everything. Um, big hotels group can actually have direct settlement with Tencent as well. And then another thing, place QR code wherever possible in the hotel. So the QR code is something that people can scan and follow your account, get all the offers and messages from. Um, this is especially important at the checking point. So while the guests check in, make sure you have a QR code at the front desk and then so they can scan and follow immediately. Then within 48 hours, you're able to send any message you want. WeChat has a tight control of not spamming. So it's not like because you have someone following you, you can just send them anything. That's not the case. So service account, you can only do post four times a month. Within each post, you can have eight articles. But you can't just spam people with random stuff. So, but the exception will be right after the user follow you, within 48 hours, you can send group message based on this as much as you want. All right, encourage guests to review and share after stay. I mentioned that already. All right, so I just want to talk about the importance of each page. According to the stats, if you have a WeChat pay at a hotel, 65% of the guests were likely to buy something. Okay, and um, there's one thing about overseas spending. For the Chinese, if they like to travel overseas, including business travelers, that they have a quota of how much cash they can have, uh, they can exchange. It's 50,000 US dollar a year. And um, so, and number two, Chinese don't like to change a lot of foreign currencies. For well, one of those reasons, secondly, it's just very difficult that when they're in a foreign country and try to find you know, somewhere to change money or withdraw on ATM, which I had a lot of trouble in Bali. Um, but if you have a WeChat Pay, it doesn't cost you a quota. 
and they can just scan it. So they don't have to carry a lot of foreign currency with them. And Chinese like to buy stuff on holiday, by the way. Okay, so uh, I want to share my experience with one of the great example from Shangri-La High Court. This is how they captured my heart, basically. So when I went to Shangri-La High Court with my family, and also I arranged accommodation for my parents as well. Um, there was a lot of trouble. So when I arrived, they already know we are one of those families that may need a lot of help. So one, number one is at the front desk, when we check in, uh, they did have this QR code next to it, so we scan it. This is, the left one is what I received. You know, the welcome message, and they have, you know, the offers, and their store, the link to their store, their flash sale, and some promotions, and all of their hotel information and hotlines. Everything you need to know is on the phone, so I don't have to flip through all these folders in the hotel room. This also will save you printing cost, the Chinese version of that. So instead, you can do it here, and you can update information anytime you want. If you do the printing, you change the menu in the restaurant, you have to change the Chinese menu too. So you can do it over here. And then after that, they just you know send some information that might be relevant to my stay. Um, secondly, is at the lobby, the lobby uh, manager actually gave us her personal WeChat account. Uh, basically, we scan each other. That's how we become friends. We just scan each other uh, on the phone that we can become friends. So basically, she tell me if I have any needs. I just send message to her. She will sort everything out. It's like the concierge, personal services, um, which is actually very useful because at times we may not be able to find the concierge or if we are somewhere outside, you know, I just sent her a message and then she will get things sorted out for me. So that is a great service that I really appreciate. Um, and also that's the same if you look at this conversation screen over here. Anyway, I hope you can see that. This is a chat. Uh, that is a restaurant in a hotel. So I believe a lot of the hotels are always thinking, how can I get more people to dine at the restaurant? So with this restaurant, that they actually have their own WeChat uh, personal account, which then I can actually book res reserve a table. I can even order food, discuss the dietary requirement with them, and order the food before I go there. Because you know we're busy running around, and then we need to catch a flight, and we want to go and dine, for example, like after a certain hour, and their their restaurant is going to close, so they actually took our order first, and then when we were there, we just go there to eat. So it's incredible. I mean, it just just another level of service, in my opinion. Um, so that's what I felt then on the last day. They encourage us to share the experience. So I did that. So this is my experience with them, on which it's a service actually made the pressure at the end of the day. Then what they also did really well is their offer. If you look at this mooncake, um, this is the pushed by, um, by a template messaging that to people who stay in their hotel. And uh, you can actually immediately just click buy and buy the mooncake and be able to take away. And you can even share with your friends through the moments. It's all integrated. And at last, you can run your digital campaigns on the post. Like I said, you can run four posts every month. So during these posts, you have eight slots. I don't recommend you to use all of them because you've had eight people only click one or two. If you have two, it's likely they click all of them. So if you want to control what they see, the best practice usually you have one hero and one small sub post, a uh, sub article that would be good. Um, so when you run an important campaign, uh, one of the su successful practice is you run three waves. 
So you do that like one way every week to catch more attention. I think this is a, this is a common practice in normal digital marketing as well. So you can do the same thing on WeChat. Any questions on the hotel strategy? Okay, no. All right. All right, so um, the last I want to talk about is the technology that actually made WeChat a really powerful platform. So here we go, this chart. Um, so like I mentioned that in the tech world nowadays that uh, everyone is very excited about WeChat, not just Chinese, but Western developers as well. Um, because WeChat now is getting, how to say, enabling really the uh, frictionless computing, seamlessly sharing data between the apps, because all these apps are embedded, cloud-based, all the data is there. So you can switch between the app seamlessly. Um, I want to mention this is that maybe at this moment, the WeChat is for Chinese customers, but in the future, you never know. You might have a lot more overseas users as well. So when we're talking about computing framework, um, there are many programs HTML file development, backend codings, servers, and clouds, and CRS and CRM integration. All of these are very techy um, aspects, so I'm not sure if any of you want to know more details, anybody? Otherwise, if you want to know details, you can always send me an email or catch me after the workshop. So there's one thing that my client always asks, I want to share is that, um, they're thinking of setting up a WeChat account just like Facebook. Um, but then when they were talking about what they want to do, then they don't know, okay, which part they actually need to do coding. The reason they ask is many of the vendors nowadays do WeChat, they're still marketing vendors. That means they don't have tech capability. Um, they are more from social backgrounds, so they, then they include WeChat as part of the social. So when it comes to coding, they won't be able to do that, and then you have to find somebody else. So when do you need coding? So for example, if you need booking function, if you need to sell products, um, set up, except for that free brand store I was talking about. Um, if you have any marketing campaign that's interactive or games, if you want to send message uh, with outside of this four times a month, you can do that, but you need to do coding. And you need to follow strict rules from WeChat. So these are the parts that you need coding. All right, so that's basically all the components about WeChat that you need to know. I just want to touch on three things um, when you're actually implementing your strategy. One is content, one is data, the other one is advertisement. So content marketing is the first thing that brings WeChat to everyone's attention. So what is most important here, I want to say, is keep your content original. So WeChat, when I say original, this may not be a big deal if you're running Facebook campaign, but in China, if you look at WeChat content, a huge part of it, they are not original content, they are copycat. They're just copying from some popular article, change a couple of words, and it's theirs. So what that means is you're gonna lose your readers because someone else have your article, but you put all the work. So what WeChat is doing now is they give a stamp what is original, you don't get that stamp easily. So if you have an official account to consistently produce or post original content, because they will be able to see you have a unique content. If you're consistently doing that more than a month, you get a stamp. So once you have the stamp, when you have a post, when people search certain 
articles. For example, in Bali travel, there are Bali hotel, uh, hotel group as a destination. People search Bali on the WeChat, want to read about this destination. Those ones with the stamp, those, article, uh, those articles from the account with the original stamp will come up first. So this is like the search ranking. So you want to make sure you have original content. So when you engage an agency, make sure they're not the one that's going to secretly steal other people's content and put on your account. There are a lot of them doing that. There's even um, apps and database plugins that basically have like uh, thousands, tens of thousands, ready articles, jokes, all kinds of cool stuff that you can actually just pull it out, change it, and post it. So it's actually really easy for a lot of the content creators because they have like this whole pool of stealed content that they can use. Um, so how to avoid, uh, how to say, using this fake content? Be careful who you choose to write your content. Uh, second thing is that if you have your, for example, if you're a hotel, um, write your own stuff and get someone to uh, translate it. And you have your original content. And also there's another thing, if you hire a Chinese local team, and if the copywriters are very Chinese, that who doesn't really know the destination or the lifestyles you know, outside, um, they may not write quite relevant and they may not be able to do research of your destination, your hotel. So if you do have people in your hotel, hotel group, being able to write something, that's an easy way to go and can reduce your cost as well. So another thing is uh, position yourself really well when you think about the content. Um, same as like ClubMed. ClubMed actually doesn't post that much interesting content, you know, generic content but they're very good at writing about why they're special. Um, so that's actually enough. And then they put their dollars in running campaigns. Um, so think about positioning, who your audience are. Um, don't just follow the trend, because what worked for others may not work for you. Data analysis, this is very important. You have a strategy with your content, you need to adjust it. You need to see what is your open rate, what's your share rate, uh, what is the rate of conversion, and then you do some testing just like the normal digital AB testing and see what works and you adjust it. There are many data tools available. I'll show you later. Ah, here's the copycat issue. <laughs> you can read later. WeChat also give penalties nowadays. All right, data strategy. WeChat capture any data. Any data there to capture, WeChat is capturing it. So at any given point, any functions, they have lots of data related to the user, you know, genders, locations, it's just the basic stuff. They will be able to see the social influence of this person. And they can, uh, you can get the transaction histories. You can see their CRM status. Um, preferred content, all of that. And then if you want more data, not just from each hand, you can create yourself. For example, at the first 48 hours, when someone follow you, you can send out some survey forms or just one or two click, so you will get more data. If you want to connect, connect to your CRM system, then you can send them the, uh, to ask them to give you their membership number so you can link it to your CRM system. And when you run the social campaign, always think about if you can include a data collection point in your campaign, like traveling profile, um, preferences. So there are many tools, either from WeChat itself or third parties, can go in deeper. So you can analyze the fence, the post performance, the majority is the open rate, share rate, build, follow conversion rate. These rates here, if you can achieve this, it's great. 
actually. And uh, it really depends on industry, that the variation is huge. And travel is an extremely competitive industry. Campaign analysis. This data, deeper data mining has to come from third party. You won't be able to get it from the chat interface. All right. So advertising. Um, Beachhead advertising is, um, I have to say, expensive. In fact, a lot of the advertising in China are more expensive than anywhere else. And if you talk to a US client, they will say, how can this be so expensive? But um, look at the number of people you're reaching to. That is why. Um, Beachhead Moments add, the minimum entrance point is 50,000 RMB. That is 10,000 Singapore dollars. Facebook, just a couple of dollars, you can run something already. So this is not for um, small play. You can also do banner ads in official accounts. Most people put that in the influencer KOL account. But the performance is actually not very good. That's, right now, it's already almost like a common knowledge. Um, the latest one just launched not long ago is mini program ad. That means if someone has a popular mini program, basically just like app. They have you know free app, you have ad advertisement on it. So now WeChat allow you to put advertisement on these uh, mini program as well. So this for people who recently have used this as a performance is quite good. But that's the same thing, almost all these formats, when they just launched, the performance is good. Once there's a lot of people using it, then the performance go, goes down. However, there is one thing that still uh, has decent investment return, is moment ad. So if, if anyone wants to know a little bit more about moment advertising, there is a case study of Airbnb. So you can take a look. Okay, there are a lot of people also talk about KOL, influencers. Um, it's a, how do you say, it's an attempting idea, but it's very, very difficult to implement in China, in any platform, uh, for a very simple reason, that you never know if the data you get is real. So someone could show you the data, say how many followers I have, and what kind of things I have achieved. Um, it may not be true. So I have clients who has lots of money and have run KOL campaigns with very little result. So this is actually one of the, one of the channels that um, I am very careful at recommending. There are KOL agencies. Um, some are good. Some, many of them are not. So, but on the other hand, if you do know, for example, your partners, okay, if you do know there's a good KOL account, use them because they're very effective. They can be very effective. So this is one of my favorite, just personally, I like this account because they have a very interesting article about travel. Um, so this is what they did with one of the campaigns, um, how to say, a soft advertisement. So recently we have this uh, crazy Asian, rich Asian movies that has all the hypes. And this is the actress. So now she's brought back to the spotlight. And this article is about her. So you know, it's, everyone wants to read about how you know about her lives, how she sacrificed for her career, and she's from this rich family and all that. And then she's from Malaysia, so um, then they go to you know these hotels that she likes to go back to and stay, and the beautiful regions that she's from and all of that. So naturally, when people look at that, they want to be there as well. And it's also like about following the fan. You know, so if you have like Lord of the Rings destinations and all of that, this is the best opportunity you have. 
think you can relate to any of these hubs. And then you have your hotels appear in one of those um, uh, KOL articles. That's where you get probably the best result. But finding them is difficult. And if they're really good, they, they can be very, very expensive as well. Um, but there are, um, I will share you with another strategy later about KOL. How you can get them cheap, basically. All right, so if you're looking at advertising, if you do want to spend money on WeChat, I will say think about doing that elsewhere at the same time to maximize your impact. So one of them is Baidu Search. At this moment, Baidu uh, pay per click is still quite effective if you do it right. So this can be included in your paid media campaign. There are also uh, aggregators. The IPU is one of the better ones, just because they're more reliable. There are a lot of them out there, and some of them are not very reliable for this way. Um, oh, um, I want to talk about another two interesting space about. Um, have you any of you heard of Fliggy? It's in Chinese called flying pig. <laughs> okay, you did. All right, so Flippy is gaining a lot of attention these days. It's basically a travel site backed by Alibaba, specialized in outbound travel. And they're not C-Trip. That means C-Trip, you cannot do advertisement on it because you are their competitors. But Flippy, you can. Um, so that is a very effective channel as well, if you can partner with them. Another one, if your hotel with uniqueness you know, something special, either destination or your hotel, it's boutique hotel. There is another platform, it's called Little Red Book. It's gaining a lot of attention very fast recently. So the people are on the Little Red Book are trendy Chinese women. And they're on there to share those special products. You know, I use this makeup product, that's really great. I, I use these bags and then you know, I found this place to stay so unique and special. So this is where all these trendy women trying to show off. They've been to some trendy places, they have some trendy goodies. Uh, and so if you do have something that works in of this platform, try to get on that because um, that will sell the hotel as well. And these are the women who actually booked the hotels themselves in the family. All right. So that's about almost everything you need to know about WeChat. <laughs> um, the last thing I want to say is synergy. Synergy is um, it's very important. I will just give you an example. So like I mentioned earlier, that if you have any channel you can use, use them to get the fans to your WeChat account, EDM websites, uh, partners. Uh, also, that when you run campaigns, make sure you run them across all the channels possible to maximize your effect. So I would like to show a very successful campaign so I met these people from Finland at IPB last year in October and they were very excited and saying how WeChat has helped them to create an official Santa Claus village account on WeChat. So um, now Chinese think this village is where Santa Claus is from. <laughs> okay. So they actually have been having this position for years. In, uh, in the 90s, the British are the first one going to this village because this is where the center is from. You know, it's in the Arctic Circle. Um, so it's been around there for a long time. But now um, you have to book a year in advance just to, just to have a stay there. The turning point is 2016. Uh, at that time, they have their official account set up actually by WeChat. Um, and then they also worked with Fliggy. 
so the Alibaba platform. They become the featured destination of the Gi as the Santa Claus village. So that was a huge success. And also, this is the China part. Uh, they have the social media, very smart team, that running a campaign overseas as well, on Facebook and everything. Um, so one of the things they do, that also KOL, I'm talking about KOL, so what they did is that they invited some influencers to go and stay there for a week for free, especially at the low seasons. So they can tell you it's not just about Christmas. There are so much things you can do over there and they post beautiful photos on Instagrams. Um, so they created a lot of the social hypes for this village and they did it all together, everything. So the result is now they have full occupancy all year round, all the time. And they're still expanding that, um, I think they only have like about 60,000 people in this village. And uh, they have a lot more than that, the visitors. And they're now building more of uh, accommodations and, um, to accommodate these new vi uh, these infant of visitors. And among all these visitors, 70%, 70% are Chinese. So uh, if any of the hotel is close to tourism board in your local area, if you have something to sell, actually this is all effort by the local tourism board. And all the hotels and all the travel industries there are benefiting from it. So this is just an example of uh, synergy and hitting all the spots that you can, not only WeChat, but with you know, featured media buys, um, influencers, all of that all together. All right, um, that's all. Is, is there anything else that you want to know? Otherwise, I'm going to the time and cost. So, timeline and cost <coughs> for setting up an account is actually quite easy. Um, I will schedule two months for the whole process, that including about two weeks for registration of your account. And then apart from that, it's like building a website. Basically, you need to uh, design the structures, the initial content. Um, if you're a hotel, you may want to generate QR code, think about where to place in the hotel, and link them back to your official account. And then you may want to take this opportunity to design a launch event. So a run campaign or some paid media. So to bring attention and create the first uh, wave of followers. This is uh, especially important for the hotel groups who wants to create more, uh, a bigger fan base. All right, cost. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to tell you how much it's going to cost. Uh, your different vendor is going to give you a different quote. But do take a look at these items that see if they're included. Because you may find some quote is very <coughs> cheap, but it's actually not cheap because it only includes one of them. And uh, there are other ones, for example, follower management. This is extremely time consuming if you have a lot of followers. So this can cost a lot um, if you let other people to run the account for you. Um, creating content depends on how many content you want to create and if it's going to be original or is it going to be translation. Account maintenance report. Uh, of course, if you have staff, you can try to do that yourself. Um, it's about whether it's worth the time because uh, the interface may not be that easy and your staff may have to translate that into a report that manager can understand. The Chinese has a different way of seeing things. <laughs> um, and also, some of the vendors, when they give you reports, it's not just standard reports from the WeChat. They may have some of their own plugin that can get more data out of it. Um, also, sometimes you need to run updates, uh, version upgrades, and all of that. 
So if you do have a big team, you can run this in-house, but even with the bigger hotel chain, usually they outsource to a WeChat operation or operating company. Um, so how much actually you need to budget for it? The rule of thumb, the rule of thumb is uh, you think about a PR agency in Singapore. Um, of course, those maintenance stuff you can kind of um, you know calculate yourself as manpower use, right? But um, for the articles, how much the article really cost? Think about a PR agency. How much the PR agency will charge you for writing an article. And don't compare to Facebook post. Facebook post is 25 words or very short. Um, this can be really, really long. I don't know if any of you have followed any accounts, you can open one of the posts. It's very long, there's lots of images. Um, so think about how much that cost in Singapore. Uh, you can think of about 60-70% of that. Chinese are not that cheap. If it is cheaper, um, if it's a lot cheaper, you may want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that is the rule of thumb, that you can, you can do the math yourself. And um, of course, if you do a maintainer package, usually the, co the cost will come down because that they will be able to hire uh, uh, dedicated resources for you. Okay. If you're running a campaign advertisement, how much is going to cost? So if I were the marketing manager, this is how I'm going to budget it uh, for launch campaigns. Will be about 10,000 to 20,000, depends on what kind of activities you want to create. Uh, this including some coding, maybe need to be involved, all the preparations, content, manpower to follow up. Um, and then on top of that, media cost. Seasonal campaign, viral campaigns. Um, this is roughly the range you can look at. You should be able to run uh, efficient campaigns with this price range. Media by cost, by Google and WeChat. Um, so if you want to run the buy to pay per click campaigns, I would budget at least 5,000 RMB to start. Um, and then usually there will be a management fee on top of that for the media agencies to run your campaign. And the WeChat moments, like I mentioned, is about 10,000 Singapore dollars to start with. And then uh, media agencies usually charge around 20%. Um, some of them may charge a bit less, you can see. Cost of developing mini program. Um, actually, I, um, if you search on the internet, it would be surprising to see that there are some figures talking about 10% of a normal app development cost. And they're actually from some credible website that's um, actually run by good beach head agencies. But, uh, I assume that's because they're not from IT backgrounds. They may be outsourcing or they are talking about in the early days when mini program was a very, very simple program. But then you're talking about a simple app versus complicated app. So I don't know how to compare that, but um, from my IT background and with my CTO, we know that roughly it's around 60-70% of the cost of development using a Chinese team. And the uh, mini program is a bit more costly than if you use HTML5 development. Uh, it's because the resources are less available. The time will be a bit shorter. Usually it will be um, close to half of the time for the app development. Um, so if for a simple one, couple of months, then you should be able to run the data. 
There's another cost, it's not a lot, but um, you might need to consider it's a hosting cost. So if you are running uh, some programming, you might need to hire a server in China, like from Tencent. Um, the server cost in China is generally more expensive than the Western world. All right, that's all for today's workshop. And um, these are the key takeaway points. I hope that's helped you today. One is that to be aware that the time is now and everyone is rushing to the space. So if you're the first, you have the best chance. And two is uh, be mindful what you're focusing on, what you're putting your dollar in. Uh, a lot of people are wasting their money and time on something that's you know, doomed to fail quickly. Well. And then consider the mobile commerce. This is where WeChat is most powerful, especially in the future. So don't stop where you know the, the conversations, the uh, the social part. Look into how to use this platform to actually do the sales for you and increase your revenue, direct sales. All right, that's all for today. Thank you very much.